But years later, we may not remember much of this, of these bilaterals or statements. But we will remember milestones. Not every summit is lucky enough to have milestones like these, but New Delhi was. And that moment came very early in the day today. The G20 leaders took their seats inside the summit hall. Prime Minister Modi gave his opening remarks. He invited the African Union's president to join the round table. Look at this. आगे की कार्रवाई शुरू करने से पहले मैं अफ्रीकन यूनियन के अध्यक्ष को G20 के स्थाई सदस्य के रूप में अपना स्थान ग्रहण करने के लिए आमंत्रित करता हूं एक्सलेंसी I must say it was very dramatic and perhaps by design. Membership for the African Union was long overdue. We told you about this yesterday too. The continent makes up 17% of the world population, but until today, they had one member in the G20. All of Africa had one member. One member for 17% of the world population. India took the lead in correcting that, in lobbying for the African Union's inclusion. So the drama was necessary. Chances are these pictures will be etched in G20 history. The African Union president being escorted to the table, the new plaque being placed in front of him, the embrace before taking the seat, all of it was historic. And it's only fair that this happened under India's presidency. We have a lot of history with Africa, like the colonial experience, the freedom movements, and later on, our non-alignment during the Cold War. Today's events reaffirm that commitment, not just to Africa, but to the entire global south the so-called developing world. This summit is a huge win on two counts. One, the ability to host such an event. We're talking about complicated logistics here. Dozens of leaders, dozens of VVIP jets and motorcades. A lot can go wrong in such situations, but India has pulled it off. It's a huge learning curve for the country and for its people. And number two, the definition of the India way. What does that mean? We know there is an American way. Meddle too much, preach a lot. We also know there is a Chinese way, ignore opinions, force your will. But India has demonstrated that a third way is possible. The India way. It has four broad steps. Consult everyone, focus on the positives, minimize the differences and build consensus. It may sound like pretty basic stuff, but right now it is the need of the hour. You cannot end the war in Ukraine over two days in New Delhi. It's impossible. But here's what you can do. You can make progress on debt relief, review climate commitments, reform multilateral organizations and set sustainable goals. So India focused on these issues instead, on issues that affect millions of people across the world. It's a template that should be followed. Consider what happened last year. Indonesia was president of the G20. Everything was focused on Ukraine. Russia walked out when Western officials spoke. Western officials walked out when Russia spoke. And who does this help? not Ukraine, certainly not millions of people in the global south. So India has tried to avoid such face-offs. It has tried to focus on deliverables, which is why this G20 has been a huge boost for brand India. New Delhi wanted to use the summit to cement its role as a major power, and so far it has gone to plan. The global south has got a voice. Africa got membership, and the joint statement was accepted. It's proof of India's new role in global affairs, that of a policy leader, not a follower. It's also a big win for the prime minister. Every leader uses foreign policy to cement their legacy everywhere in the world. Prime Minister Modi is no different. After taking office, he displayed keen interest in global politics. Around 10 years have passed since then. He's now a G20 veteran. Just think about it. Most of the current G20 leaders came to power after Prime Minister Modi like Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron, Fumio Kishida, Yoon Su Kyol, Olaf Scholz, Rishi Sunak, all of them are relatively new leaders. Prime Minister Modi capitalized on that. He used his experience and India's clout to get things done. And if you think about it, this was not a normal G20. You did not have to be told that India was hosting it. 
You just had to walk on the streets. There were hundreds of banners, multiple advertisements, and of course, a lot of media interest. And why not? The decisions taken in the G20 affect people's life. So it's only fair that their voice is heard. Perhaps that will be the legacy of India's G20 presidency, focusing and listening to the people. Not just closed-door dipl diplomacy, not just endless political bickering. A summit to actually make a difference.